Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. I don't know how well you guys know me yet, but I am not a morning person. I never have been a morning person. Chances are I never will be a morning person. The worst thing about my day is when I have to get up out of my bed. They make beds so comfortable, so cozy. They make you never want to leave. And it doesn't help that for this Christmas, my wife got me one of those weighted blankets. Do you guys have those? Those things are amazing. It's like a nice, firm but gentle hug. So when morning comes, it's, it's not my favorite time of the day. I don't like to roll out of bed. I'd rather just stay there. But no matter how much you're like me or not and, and you want to stay in bed, there's something, no matter what, that always works to usually get people up. Do you know what that is? It's when somebody turns on the light. You're usually there in your, in your room. It's dark. It's cozy. If, if it's just that time when the, the sun's rising and it comes through the window, well, you, you can't miss it. it. It brightens the room. If when you're a kid, you, you have struggles getting up in the morning, your mom will come in there and turn on the light and say, it's time to get up, and, and it kind of, it's bright on your eyes, and it makes you get going. You can't miss that light. You can't mistake it. When the light shines in the darkness, it's noticeable. You see it. You can't help but see it. Today, we celebrate Epiphany. And that word epiphany means to appear or to be revealed. And what the prophet Isaiah tells us is that this appearing, this revealing that we have is when Jesus is unveiled as being for the whole world. He's the light that came into the world and he's for all the world. So today as we continue looking at the prophet Isaiah and, and what he's given us, we see a wonderful revelation a wonderful thing that this baby born at Christmas is not just for Jacob's race as we sang in our hymn, but he's for every race, every people, every tribe, language, and nation on earth. What a beautiful lesson this is. And we can see that because Christ is a light in the world, a light that you cannot miss. Listen again to our lesson from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings will be brightness of your dawn. Light up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the sea will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. This is God's word. Isaiah reveals to us that our light has come. And that's what we get to celebrate today. But for the original audience, for the, the Israelites, well, the light had not yet come. And so they were a people living in darkness, in thick darkness. And yes, indeed, these were dark and dreary times for the people of Israel. When he says darkness covers the earth and thick darkness, you have this picture of, of thick, dark, black clouds that are all around them. It's a dark and dreary picture. Whenever scripture uses darkness, it's a way of telling us about the ignorance or sin, grief, unbelief, or woes of various kinds that come from sin. And when it talks about thick darkness, outer darkness, that's the way that God describes that separation from him, complete separation, not just death in this world, but eternal damnation. And so he's saying about his chosen people, about Jacob's race, that sin was all around them. Ignorance, 
unbelief, and dark, dark death was at their door. So these are certainly woeful times for them. If we look back at the, the two chapters leading up to this, uh, in chapter 58, Isaiah writes about how the people tried to win God's favor. They were doing the things that he had prescribed for them to do for their ceremonial laws of worship. They were going through those motions. They were making sacrifices. They were fasting. But all of that was kind of like a, like a shell. It looked good on the outside, but on the inside there was nothing. They were going through the motions. It appeared that they had faith. But God looks past the outward appearance and he looks to the heart and he saw nothing. No real faith. No, no real love for God. And so Isaiah goes on in chapter 59 to describe what this looks like. He says it's like they put up this, this barrier between them and God. This thick wall, this impenetrable wall that no one could break through. No one could, could get through this wall. And that was because of their sin. Again and again, they were, were stacking bricks on this wall by turning away from the Lord. And now God says, this wall cannot be broken. And so, yes, these were dark and dreary times for the people of Israel. Because of their sins, Israel will be defeated and carried away into captivity. But even worse than that was the separation that they had from their God. That no one was able to intervene. That no one could help. And as much as it pains us, we are very similar to these Israelites. You don't think so? Can't you see the similarities? Doesn't darkness and sin cover us too? The new year just started and we have all of these terrible things seemingly happening in the world already. Talks about World War III. That seems like dark and dreary times to me. Darkness covers us too. And who of us can say that we always practice what we preach, that we're not just going through the motions? After all, who of us is actually preaching anymore? So many are afraid to preach it like it should be out of fear of rejection, out of fear of being called some, some silly name, or simply because we've grown lukewarm. That it's easy for us to come here and sit here on Sunday mornings, but then never actually do anything between Sundays to show we have faith. All too often, even if we are preaching, the words that we use do not match up with how we live and act. Our actions don't line up. Even here at church, are we just going through the motions and worshiping God? Are our hearts near to him or are they far from him? Our own sinfulness covers us. Darkness is over the people's thick darkness over us too. This is seen by the bitter and battered relationships we have with one another, even with those who are closest to us. We seem to put up barriers and walls between us and our, our spouse or our family or our friends. But the worst of it is, is that we're stacking those bricks on the wall, an impenetrable wall, just like the Israelites, to separate ourselves from God. Thick darkness covers the people indeed. The results of this darkness are every ugly, awful, and evil thing that is seen in the world. The results of the darkness are pain, sickness, sadness, and death. And that is what makes Isaiah's lesson so powerful, so wonderful. Yes, he talks about darkness being in the world, but he talks about the light coming into the world, the light that the darkness could not overcome. That's why epiphany is so important. Isaiah really gives us hope. And he gives us things to do. Two commands. Arise and shine. Get up from your slumber. Stop sleeping. But get up and shake off the dust and ashes. There's something that is amazing that was going to happen for the people. He's saying, you want to pay attention to this. Arise and shine, for your light has come. God is sending light into the world. 
Your times are dark, but here you go. Here is a wonderful gift. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. Whenever the Bible talks about the glory of the Lord, this is like a way of describing where God's going to intervene for his people. Where God's going to act in a way that only God can. And indeed, he did act. He carries through his promises. He responds. He does what he said he was going to do. And that's why right before this lesson, he says his own arm worked salvation. He would bring salvation to us. He would be able to break through that wall that we've put up from the darkness of our sin. Sure, the darkness of sin's all around us, but the glory of the Lord appears over you. That's the epiphany that we have. To appear, to be revealed. The light of the world has come to shine through the darkness. And there's only one light to shine through the darkness. There's only one light who can restore our relationship with God. There's only one light that breaks the barrier that sin has put between us and God. There's only one light who comes to bring comfort and peace. Only one light that can wipe away the tears from our eyes forever. This one light is the light, this one light who on the night of his birth, the Lord had caused his glory to be shown all around some shepherds as the angels came and sang in joy. This is the only light that had a bright light appear in the sky to lead Magi from afar to come and worship him. And this light, of course, is Jesus. It's like a light on a hill in a dark night. You can't miss it. And boy, did Jesus shine when he came here. He shined like none other. For all of the times that we have fallen into sin, Jesus never did. His thoughts always matched up with his words. Jesus' actions were always in line with what he said. He loved everyone, God, his enemies, even you and me. He put no barriers up always practicing what he preached. And if there was ever anyone opposing what he was saying, well, he never shied away from that. But even more than all of those wonderful things that Jesus did for us by living a holy and perfect life, we see so much more in how he came to take on the darkness of our sin. He allowed the darkness to overcome him. No, the darkness could not overcome him. He was sinless. He was going to overcome the darkness, but he allowed it to happen. As he goes to the cross and pays for our sins, he allows the darkness of our sins to take him. And he allows outer darkness, hell, to be placed right upon him. That's right, the worst of our sin, the worst consequences that, there have, that we have for our sins is what Jesus faced when he was on the cross. That separation that sin brings is what he felt, what he experienced as God the Father turned away from God the Son. But the story doesn't end there. He died and was buried. But three days later, the brightest light that the world has ever seen was shown when he busted forth from that empty grave, signaling to us that he truly had conquered sin and Satan, and yes, even death itself. Jesus is certainly the Savior God promised to send to Israel, the one Isaiah had told them about, the one where he says, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on your arm. Do you see why this lesson is chosen for Epiphany? Magi coming and bringing him gifts most rare, coming from afar to worship him. That's what Isaiah pictured. And in our gospel for today, that's what we see. Magi coming to worship him, to bring him gifts most rare, that they were part of the fulfillment of this prophecy. But you want to know something special? You are too. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. 
as a magi from afar came and were filled with joy to worship Jesus, well, so are we. As they brought generous gifts and laid them before his feet, well, we do the same thing. For Jesus is the light of the world that chases away the darkness of our sin. And this is a wonderful message that Isaiah gives us, not just for Jacob's race, not just for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles, for all nations, for all people. Jesus came into the world to save the whole world. And so as Isaiah writes to us, he tells us to arise, to get up, to shake off the dust and ashes and understand that God has came to save you. Yes, you, your sins are forgiven. Your slate has been wiped clean. You're radiant and holy and blameless just as Christ has made you. But that's not all that Isaiah tells us. He says, now that you know this wonderful gift, now that you can rise up from the ashes, that the darkness has been chased away by the light, now he tells you to be the light. He tells you to shine. And the way that we shine is by preaching about our Savior. The way that we shine is living our lives in a way that pleases our Savior. That means letting our light be seen in the world. Not just amongst one another when we're here on Sundays, but between Sundays. As we go out to our schools, as we go out to our work, as we, as we interact with those in the world, we let our light shine. We reflect the light that God has given us, and we shine bright as stars before them, so they too can see the love of Christ. We are glad that Jesus came into the world and that he was for all the world. It's the greatest gift of all. We never want to set it aside because Jesus alone makes our hearts throb and swell with his joy, a joy that will truly last. We have a savior, we have a king, and he is the light of the world. And so with Isaiah, we take this wonderful thing to heart. We arise, we shine, for we see that the light has come, a light that we cannot miss. If you're anything like me, you don't like to get up in the morning you like to stay in your, your cozy bed. You like to, to lay there in the covers. And even if you're not like me, there's something that we all need to know. If, if you like to be an early bird or a, a night owl or some type of midday blue jay, whatever. I just made that up. That's not real. <laughs> whatever it is, we can't miss the light. We can't miss that Jesus has come into the world. It jumps out at us from the pages of scripture. We see it all year round as we come and worship him. And we have others see it as we reflect that light in the world. So just as we can't miss the light, let's be that light to others so that they can't miss it either. Jesus is the light. He's for all the world. You can't miss it. Amen. <laughs>